Good. Is she your girlfriend? <laughs> I can put this aside. <laughs> and if I can ask her, can you hold the water in the water kettle? Some water? Yeah, do that. Do you really even have yeah, some, some tasting, okay. uh, some cider, uh, uh, some cherry wine, yeah. things like that? So I put it in the fridge. So everyone ready? Yep. Yes we are. Okay. So before and half you go. Let's introduce ourselves. Okay, so my name is František, I'll go last for that. This is my girlfriend, Unha. Uh, so I'm Unha, come from Korea, and nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, we are basically doing a food hacking base uh, tour. Uh, you may see some of the people involved in the food hacking base from previous events, like Marcel, Dan, <laughs> Ingo, etc. Sorry, Ingo, <laughs> Ivo, yeah. sorry. Uh, so I will just say shortly uh, what we do. And after we will jump on the probiotic workshop, which is promised for today, and the brewing, we will see how many drinks we will, have to be, we will be able to do. They will definitely do kombucha, harvesting and new batches, and we will be handling out the cultures. And we will see if we can make other ones later on. Uh, definitely we will do some also tomorrow, but we will have to be careful because we will have to be doing the Korean style of dinner, so we have to properly kind of organize what I will be around. To talk to people, we could do tent pack, if you things like that, you know, there are possibility of fermentation. Uh, so, Food Hacking Base is a project of people who are interested in food and drinks. Uh, we came together for the first time in a camp in Finnofur 2011 under the Hackers on the Plane and Nick Farr's project. And we did cuttering there, fermentation, we have a kind of food hacking hat uh, for the uh, camp, let's say, in this way. Uh, later on, we went kind of more independent. We went for the CCC conferences, and uh, 28, 29, and after that, OM. Uh, how many people have been on OM? If I can ask. Yes, yeah, so quite so. I wasn't there. Was yesterday, we <laughs> finished that, and now we are here in the Boy Varantis. We will see if we go to the Luxembourg, where we are supposed to. Be, I think safe, 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 safe to cut. Yes. So this is basically what we do. Yeah, yeah. Now, I am Czech, I live, uh, uh, I have been traveling for nearly 10 years and biotechnologist, so I'm interested in really kind of uh, doing stuff with bio, especially food and beverage fermentations. non alcoholic are my kind of you know, favorite, but I do alcohol too, recently especially. Uh, my girlfriend is Korean, uh, she did different type of arts, performing arts, healing arts, etc. And now we are living in the south of South Korea. Today uh, we will do probiotic worship on brewing. Uh, I kind of led the team and topic to be open, partly based on what is going to be ready for harvesting, which is in this case kombucha. So we will be harvesting kombucha and we will be doing a new batch of kombucha. Whoever likes and it's recommended will bring home a, a culture. Uh, kombucha. Uh, uh, another ferments like what kefir grains, kefir grains. What did kefir. you do? I read this. Kefir. Water kefir. Wine. Okay. Uh, wine and other type of brewing like making cheese or tempe, uh, natto, things like that. You know. So then you have basic experience because it's actually not so much different. Uh, once you learn the basics with the fermentation, you kind of understand what is about. Like growing the plants, you know. Once you grow one or two. Species, you know the basics. Um, animals the same, etc. Now, kombucha. What is kombucha? Uh, the origin is not known exactly. Uh, some people think it's few hundred years old, some few thousand. Uh, at the moment, it looks like it's coming from uh, China, and it's kind of situated, you know, before the Christ, born of the Christ, let's say. So more than two thousand years old. Uh, you uh, have a ferment. I can show it to you, one of the small ones here. This is, uh, uh, whoever haven't seen it, come and you can touch it. This is Kambuja Mother, called also SCOBY. SCOBY is acronym for Simulative Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, there are more than 10, let's say 10, 15 different microbes in Kambuja. 
both yeast and bacteria, uh, which are fermenting sugar and black tea. So kombucha, in a simple way, it's a ferment where you make black tea with sugar and you let it go. Uh, fermentation time is between one to two weeks, depending on the temperature and the size of the scoby. And uh, basically, when you feel like you like the flavor, you harvest it, which means in a simple way you put it in a bottle. Uh, so there's not kind of a rocket science really kind of in this. You can go more complicated. There are things which are really wonderful and beautiful to know. How the simple procedure is really making black tea with sugar and adding the kombucha when it's kind of not too hot because the cultures, the microbes don't like very hot. Uh, what is this actually? Uh, I said bacteria and yeast. This is, by the way, cellulose or microcellulose. One of the bacteria in the culture creates a thing which is called biofilm. Lots of microbes do this in the nature, uh, which is uh, having a protective uh, function. <coughs> so, for example, in the sun, it can be against chemicals, uh, for example, antibiotics. So, kind of, if, we, if this happens in the human body, we have big issues because if you use <coughs> antibiotics, basically, uh, from the research, the microbes are able to resist up to 500,000 times higher dosages once they create a biofilm. So, they are extremely resistant. So, it's protection. But well, it's also communication. The microbes are able to communicate between themselves in this community and this biofilm. And uh, it's also nutrition. They are making channels and they are basically able to trans distribute the nutrition through these structures. And my recommendation is to keep kombucha as happy as possible with as many microbes as possible in it. Because more microbes, both with your yeast, better for you. You should be careful in general uh, digesting just a few strains of uh, microbes like just in the milk or just the yeast, you know. Uh, they may get a dominance in your large in your intestine because when you eat them they have to survive basically all the way down through your digestive system, especially the stomach, and to the large intestine where they start to multiply. And if they have a good effect on your health, then they are called probiotics. Probio, basically improving your health and general condition. Uh, in this case, we know, or traditional, we know, and now by the science, we know that they improve digestion, definitely. So, moving of the store and increase of the intake of the nutrition. Uh, they are decreasing certain types of cancers and uh, immunity reactions like allergies. So, consumption of probiotics in general, like sauerkraut, you know, yogurts, you know, kefir, kimchi, whatever. It's a good idea, live beers. You know, it's something that is you know reasonable and it does well to the body. So definitely slow food, which I recommend. Fermentations for this are great. Here we have the kombucha culture. Before we uh, start to play the deck, I will bring a bottle of kombucha so we can taste it. You, you know, tea is uh, supporting our, for example, kind of you know. Basically, it's kind of speed us up like mate, etc. So it has kind of this effect on the body. This one, it's kind of, I would say, uh, medium to light. It's not very strong. Uh, this one was perfect, let's say, for our beef or something like that. Uh, in America, they generally brew it stronger. More acidic, more vinegary. Yeah, they want everything strong in America. And that depends on the length, the length, the length between the pear shape or the mountain. Temperature, time, size of the kombucha. Bigger size of the kombucha, faster fermentation, higher temperature, faster fermentation, and uh, to do longer time, more acidic. Basically, if you do not stop it, it will continue and it will become vinegar. Oh. Very good vinegar. You can flavor it, it's amazing. But if you make a vinegar, you need to add extra sugar to increase basically the final level of the, uh, of the acidity. We will first start to harvest. The second page. Harvesting kombucha. Again, it's simple. Uh, they are, there is a step which you can do. Uh, it's not necessary, but I recommend it. That's just training. If you use at least this to take pieces of kombucha out from the brew, it's, I think, a good idea because lots of people, when you drink kombucha, 
Uh, and you don't strain it, thank you. Uh, there will be pieces of the scoby which for many people are kind of disgusting. <laughs> I don't mind, but lots of people do. So I recommend kind of to strain it and be kind of relaxed on that. If you want to really strain it properly, you use some cheese cloth or kind of gaza in it. So it goes through and the scobies are really kind of catched. Uh, after you put it in the bottles, and if you like to have it fizzy, you let it ferment for under one to two days at room temperature, getting you know proper close to get secondary carbonation, and after you move it to the fridge, otherwise it explodes, uh, oh, yeah. you get more sour. If you don't like it fizzy, you just put it in a bottle, close it and put it in the fridge, directly, and you are fine. So there's a simple way. Uh, it is the time for many types of flavoring, when you add flavors. So just to record now, we um, will hmm? with with my milk milk uh, kefir. Yeah. I use uh, a plastic sieve. Sieve. Yeah. Uh, is it the the proper way? Also you can use plastic. You can use metal. Whatever no, you like. No. Uh, no. Uh, Obstructions for using metal or you see that I have to come with a plastic uh, bucket. Yeah. I personally would prefer to have it in a glass or metal, meaning stainless steel. But for the traveling purposes, it's hard. Uh, this thing is very aggressive. You know, kombucha is basically reactive. It's acidic, kind of. You know, it's alive. Uh, so I recommend to have as stable thing for it as possible. Glass is perfect. If you can. You can use a plastic or ceramic crop, you know, it's up to you. But remember, kombucha is aerobic culture, it needs air. So at the end, you know, when you are finished with your brew, you put some cloth on the top, some string around because fruit flies, especially, they will try to make it in really hard. So you protect against the insect, but uh, it needs air. Kombucha needs air, it's really important. Temperatures of fermentation, it's up to you. I recommend to oscillate it because there are lots of microbes and not all of them like 25, some like 35, some like 15. If you make a wave, something between, you know, for example, with over the night, you know, on your kitchen top is, you know, 10, 15 degrees, over day 20, 25, beautiful. That's nice. Be careful over 30 degrees. Uh, I know it's not happening so often here, but over 30 degrees, for a few days it's okay, but after that you would get in troubles. The culture will start to kind of have issues. And in mm -hmm. case you, you don't want it to go, like let's say you go on holiday and you just. You, if you go on a holiday, in the fridge, you do the same thing like for making the new kombucha. You just make a fresh black tea, dissolve the sugar when it's hot, you know, and after when it's cooled down, you put the kombucha in and put it in the fridge. Same oh, yeah. And yeah. in the fridge, it won't grow. Uh, it will grow, but slower. You have several weeks, at least a month or two, before you need to feed it again. Now, I am just going to strain it. I will ask one of the person if so I can ask to hold it. Yes. So he thinks there is a light, I just have to feed it every day. You feed it basically when you start a new batch. You can do a continuous fermentation of kombucha, I don't. I try, I prefer batch. You know, one week, ten days harvest, one week, ten day harvest, you know. That's the principle. Hey, how long can it be then that you go on holiday without doing Some people have it for months, some people for years in the fridge. I recommend it for one to two months. One to two months, and after that I would recommend to uh, take it out for a few weeks, you know, and make it again kind of, you know, alive. Good. So, I will show you on one bottle the harvesting procedure because it's very simple. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> now, I recommend to be aware uh, because this is quite an important part. If you do wrong, you may get in troubles. Oh, the means means really big troubles, uh, meaning explosions and things like that. So, I like explosions. You like explosions? Well, glass in your ceiling and things like that. You can see, I'm, if I can, I am using the funnel and just simple technique to put it up. You can use tubing, gravitational flow, it's up to you. 
Uh, now, look carefully. If you want to be on a safe side, you end up around here. You can fill it up more, it's fine. <coughs> but if you leave it like this and you over ferment it, uh, then you still can quite easily kind of hold it and grease it a little bit, etc. If you have a, the one thing which is a disadvantage of the glass, you don't know. If you have a plastic, and this is a nice uh, trip, uh, the tip which many beer brewers do, they bottle their drinks in a glass, but one bottle they make in a plastic. So they can come and just squeeze it and feel the pressure, release a bit, hear it, you know. It's a good trick and I recommend it. Uh, this one, for my purposes, I will go from up to here. But really this one is kind of the same one. I recommend the swing to bottles, I really like them. Uh, for a long time, one of the reasons why I was kind of saying they are great is that if it explodes, it kind of explodes like this and spray everything around. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the case, you know. I have found from several people uh, that they actually explode also this way. So you should be careful. So what you do, you put the fresh kombucha, which you have after your one week or ten days, into the bottle. One thing which I, of course, I forget and I shouldn't, is asking you to get your cups and taste it. So you have actually an idea of what did you harvest it? What did you put in the bottle, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what you tasted before, it's kombucha which was harvested on, I think, CCC. So it's around two weeks old, so it's two weeks aged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. This one is what we are harvesting. It's a good idea to taste it so you know. And I will have a few comments on that topic, which is important one. Do you feel the difference? Uh, it's a bit sharper. I would recommend, uh, and we will do it, I think, uh, play with it a little bit. I will do things which I will not recommend you to do at the beginning. Uh, I will add a bit of dissolved sugar and a bit of water. Uh, now, why not to do it? Uh, if you want to break the brew safely at the beginning of your experiments, uh, I would recommend you to not add all the sugar which you need at the beginning of the fermentation. Of course, you should taste your brew before you bottle it. If you feel like it's really needing extra sugar, you can add it. But once you add the sugar at the end of the fermentation, before bottling, you are reactivating your culture. There is a way higher uh, chance of explosions than if you don't add the sugar. This bottle, if I don't like to have it physique, I will now take it, put it in the fridge, and done. I will leave it for one, two weeks, and I have non physic drink. If I like it to have it physique, I would leave it to ferment now as, as it is at my kitchen counter for its low temperature now, around <coughs> below 20, two, three days, and after I would put it in the fridge. You should play at your home concerning the carbonation because everybody prefer, prefer, prefers different amount. Now, one thing to remember uh, before you go for the carbonation. Uh, within that two, three days, the kombucha, of course, is alive. It's eating the sugar, so the taste, so the sweetness goes down. So you uh, bottle or you bottle your drink a little bit sweeter than you like them if you want to make them fizzy. Because it will go a bit down in that sweetness. That's just a small trick. Uh, and that's more or less you know, about the bottling and secondary <coughs> fermentation. Two, three days for kombucha at a kind of temperature like is fine. In the summer, one, two days should be kind of enough. But if you have a plastic bottle, good idea just to check out. Making you know, 1 liter of kombucha, 5 liters of kombucha, and 50 liters of kombucha kind of, uh, there is not too, too much difference concerning time. Bigger the batch gets uh, to some certain amount, you know, you know, uh, more efficient it is. Uh, it's extremely hard to measure the sugar content. This will be how much, you know, uh, that's around 20, 10 liters, 20 bottles. That's kind of, you know, you need a dedicated department in your fridge, or rather fridge for these activities, yeah. And now we will make a new culture. This is your baby. Uh, if I leave it, and I don't move around in the car all the time, uh, basically, let's say that I will fill it up with the growing needle here, you will have the kombucha all around here, and it will get thicker and thicker and thicker. 
several centimeters, not a problem. Somewhere there, I will later show you actually dry cam just copy, which I want to use for laser cutting of our logos, etc. It's really kind of nice. I will show you later on if I find it. Anyway, uh, the kombucha will grow all around here. There will be cloth on the top for all your fermentation, otherwise you get insect, which, uh, you know, it's kind of its own extra nutrition because they will never make it out, kind of, you know. They put the uh, larvas in, later on they will start to crawl around and they will die. And they will stay, kind of, you know, start, you know, be embedded in the layer, you know. Exactly. Uh, it's not very nice concerning the, for many people optically, they don't like it, so I try to avoid, and I don't like them in my cultures anyway. You know, kind of, you know, it's, uh, I don't have a problem with that. I don't, actually, I don't have a problem even with the scopies in it, you know, but some people don't enjoy it. Especially if you give someone to a special taste for the first time. Squishy. You know, kind of, like, you know, you know, you know you're like oyster kind of in your... Yeah. <laughs> and how much of the scoby do you need to start off with? You don't need scoby at all, actually. This is a specific ah. thing, uh, different from the kefir okay. grain. Uh, just the liquid. Actually, if I put now fresh tea, uh, with the sugar in this, it'll be enough. Just the liquid on the walls will make the kombucha. But I like to put there a piece of scoby because I am trying to make kombucha as diverse, considered micro as possible. Also, I put a bit of liquid because, you know, there are microbes you don't like, for example, too much oxygen. So it's likely they are, for example, more in the bottom of the uh, you know, brew and not in the kind of, you know, kombucha scoby. Uh, so I try a piece of scoby for the ones who like oxygen, and it's fine with that, and a bit of liquid for the ones who may not like it, because I would like to have all of them there. Of course, it's open, so many microbes get in, but kombucha is very sturdy culture. It changes depending on the place. Here, the microbial kind of spectrum will be a bit different from San Francisco, for example, or from Korea. Mm -hmm. So it's changing continuous, and definitely part of the, our group, Kulekin Base, the idea is, uh, we call it kombucha cosmopolita because I'm kind of getting it then from all around the world and giving it away. And I definitely would like to do in the future project to track down the changes of the microbial species in them. If you want to really your culture to take off, to take the dominance kind of in the brew, it's a fresh media and you don't want to have contaminations. Uh, I would start for example this batch at least with the kombucha like this and you know maybe 200 milliliters of the liquid. Uh, in your case, I will give you small pieces, so at home maybe you will start easily for first, you know, one, two weeks, for example, with a liter container. And after that, you can easily scale to five, ten liters, you know, no problem. Uh, we talk about the black tea and the sugar. We are trying to use better ingredients and we promote the better ingredients. In this case, uh, at least we got, I'm sure if it's bio, this one is not bio, but it's fair trade at least. This one is bio and uh, fair trade, uh, so kind of that idea of kind of contributing reasonably, you know, and getting local or better ingredients. You can use at home bags. I got them because I couldn't get uh, anything else today. But otherwise, I like you know nice black tea. By usual, it can be English breakfast or salon, whatever. Decent black tea, nice light brown sugar or dark brown sugar if you like. I don't like white sugar, there are heavy chemicals used, you know, to purify it and basically most of the nutrition it's taking away. In the light brown sugar, if you have a good light brown sugar which is organic and natural process, it's basically just evaporated sugarcane juice. So it's a sap from the plants which has lots of amino acids, you know, lots of minerals, really nice medium for the microbes because you need to feed them. Like, you know, for the human being eating just potatoes, it's not the best idea for long term. It's the same for the microbes. So we have our black tea. We'll use partly this and the bags, unfortunately. Unfortunately. In this case, now, the counting. You have there some manual and the data. Uh, these things I generally use around uh, half percent to one percent of tea and around six percent of sugar which is not too much if you think about 10 liters uh, for 10 liters how much i would use of the sugar somebody also count six persons six hundred grams of sugar and for the tea half person half person we have hundred person one person fifty grams fifty grams or one hundred grams depending how strong i want it so it's not something really expensive if you make it at home this is uh, around 25 liters, so if we do half percent, 
that would be 10 liters is 50, 100, so around 125 grams, something like that. Not sure if you have so much. If not, I will add later on. So I'll just, you know, measure the T. If you don't have a scale, you can basically get the, how you call it, you can get the one T bag, it's two grams, you know. Or you can go by the eye, just make it strong, but it's not kind of a real science, you know. So we have now 44 in, so then this should be 50 grams, so with this it will be 90. Can somebody start to unpack them, please? Thank you. <coughs> so that will be another 50, and let's say another few. And now we will also weigh the sugar. And I use light brown or dark. You want the tags or not? Uh, the tags, yeah, well, yeah, I don't think Pull them off or not? Yeah, we don't need them. It's faster to do it like that, you know, just without the tags. Uh, okay, so now we will add the hot water in a minute. I will just boil it once more. And we will prepare the sugar in the Perfect, I'll put it back because we need more space. <coughs> yep. So, uh, sorry for the gap. <laughs> so, hot water. Make it seven minutes if you can. I'll tell you when it's seven minutes. And if you can boil a little bit more water. And in the meanwhile, we will start to wait out the tea. How much sugar will we say? 25 liters of sugar. 6%, 1500, 1 and a half kilo, reasonable, I hope. Now, because I have 500 milligrams in each bag, I don't have to weigh it, just end it. This one is the sugar, light brown sugar, cane sugar. But actually the sugar, in the final drink there is not so much sugar because it's... It's fermented and turned into the acid. Yeah. This is the amount for whole batch. <laughs> and it will decrease. Yeah, more than half of that, maybe two thirds will be fermented. So it will be not too much sugar kind of, you know, left in it. It's hard to predict. Uh, I can tell you pH. You know, the pH is going down, you know, even I think dropping under 3, uh, pH 3. If you let it for a long time, it's acidic. Uh, however, generally, it's about 4, 5 or something like that, depending again on how long you grow. So, uh, we have the sugar, tea is here, and we will be dissolving in a minute. Five minutes, so two minutes more, we are nearly there. Steep for too long, it will get really bitter. No. Which I don't like. Some people they even boil it for an hour, whatever. I don't do it. I'm trying to follow more as the traditional Korean, oh, sorry, Asian kind of culture. Tea they make just for example for a minute, but they can do it several times. So I put them a bit longer, but I'm trying to be a reasonable kind of. And actually, this one is part from Puer and usual tea, oh, and it's so just so better. Better. Sorry, <laughs> Puer. Puer is one type of tea. It's kind of stronger, earthy flavor, you know. So actually, in this country, there was poor to it. Was usually like in any Okay, seven minutes. How do you say it? Seven? Seven minutes. Okay, it's time. Okay. So I do first. I will put the okay. sugar in already. And now I will add this straining. I forgot. I recommend you not to squeeze it. If you squeeze it, uh, thank you, you basically would get the bitterness out. So it's not a good idea, I think. Now, this one is simple. You can see the sugar is dissolving. We may need a bit more hot water in a minute. Thank you, Ali. Uh, can someone start to fill this up with, with the cold water? Because I don't want to add the hot water to this. If then, oh yeah, let's say yeah. Halfway. Checking out the sugar. Water will be out, so but there will be no sugar in there. Yeah. It will be really yeah. fermented. No sugar in the end, but the garbage is gone. Once the sugar is gone, basically most of the gas is too because that's generally carbon dioxide. So if 
but it's, you know, the vinegar is very stable. It doesn't really break down later on. That's a kind of final product. Yeah. So once you get the vinegar, you are not actually fermenting anymore, you are aging. So you are aging, you like good wine, you know. You know, if you can only give it one to three years, beautiful. Yeah. It will improve in the flavor, it will kind of, kind of go and good. And you keep that outside of the fridge. Yes. Yes. It's just aging yes. yes. If you make it fresh, under what temperature should you store it? Yeah. Fresh yeah. means uh, for drinking. Oh, for a few weeks. Uh, yeah. uh, I put it in the fridge and I try to go below six. Oh, wait, wait. You put it in the fridge, why? To stop your reaction or just to keep it good? To, to stop what? Yeah, to, the to slow the down. Fridge. Why? To stop the reaction? Uh, so to, slow slow to slow down the slow fermentation. Down. So, okay, so uh, final steps. It's okay. it's now, now, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can. But if you add yeah. yeah. warmer water. So. We are finishing up, if I can. We will add a little bit of warm water, you know. This should be below 30 degrees. Uh, you can, you know, check it by the hand, but you can, I think, quite reasonable check what is the temperature. If you are afraid, go for colder. It will warm up later on in your house, it will take longer, but you will be sure that you don't kind of burn your culture. The cultures, if I add them at the beginning to that small pot full of black tea and uh, sugar, it was very hot and it was very concentrated. It would kill them because of the too high temperature and because of the uh, high concentration of the sugars, which basically the osmotic pressure would be too high and the cells would burst. Now, what we do? We will, it's 25 liters, so in this case, we have the kombucha, this is the kombucha which we harvested. Uh, 25 liters, I think one person, so 250 milliliters of the liquid, absolutely fine. You can skip it. I like to put there some. Uh, if I put this in, I'm going to be sure there will be beautiful kombucha made, no problem. I don't have to put the scoby. I will because I like the scoby and I believe it's kind of complex microbe. But just this kombucha which we harvested, if I eat it like this, fine. It will make a scoby, it will be strong enough. And I'm quite sure. This kind of it yeah, take it will take longer. It will make scoby, it will take a little bit longer. If you don't have a scoby in the liquid, uh, it has to recreate the scoby completely. If you have a scoby in the liquid, it's uh, growing faster on the top, and you can see it as a kind of whitish, uh, whitish top. You can see it, for example, here. So Do you see this? Snotty. The kind of whitish part, that's the new uh, microcellulose, where it's growing. But so the microcellulose is also made by this thing, or exactly that's actually the thing. Uh -huh. The microcellulose is a product, but it's also kind of the house for the micro. Do you see this is the new layer, quite thin on the top. Oh, this is old a, layer, under layer. You have a sponge, and then on top of this, this is kind of yes, this it will grow, stuff. and later on, you know, kind of it will. If you have a kombucha at home, it will grow in this case completely around, yeah. thick. Thicker and thicker. If you take it from batch to batch, which I recommend, take everything in a new batch. And if you don't tear it apart, you will see actually later on how it will be. One kind of pancake connected to second pancake, third, uh -huh. fourth, and around that age, which is around one month, one and a half yeah. months, it will start to fall apart in the bottom. It will start to kind of kind of like chains kind of hanging in, you know, which is uh, cellulose, which is being actually eaten by the microbes. And that's one of the reasons why I like this culture so much, because they are there producing the cellulose from the sugar, and they are there to eat it. So actually it's kind of a whole kind of small ecosystem of going around. And uh, there are people who like just to take one layer, the fresh layer to the new kombucha, I like to have it there all. So in that case, for example, you should be later on careful, because more bigger kind of you know, proportion, you know, it's a surface thing. If you have a big kombucha scoby, for example, in, a, in just a little liquid, it will ferment really fast because it's kind of you know really kind of strong you know culture. Of course, the microbes diffuse into the liquid, but bigger mother, faster fermentation. So if you want to slow down, you can have kind of tall container, with, which is not so wide, so between small mother and more liquid. So you can play around that. But this one. If I need a room temperature between 20 and 25, within a week I can harvest.
Yeah. Uh, I can definitely tell you that uh, if you go on a high temperature, you'll be fa fermenting faster, but the flavor generally is not so good. We are on 25, so we are okay. We have culture, bacteria and yeast, which is called kombucha, uh, scoby. We make a black tea and uh, we basically strain it and dissolve the sugar in it. Diluted with the water, cold water. We got this baby kind of, you know, full, diluted, and later on we added the culture. At the moment, I will just put this on the top. And what's, what's the point when you decide it's too much? Uh, well, I, as I said, no, it's okay. Uh, so it will be like this with a string around. So get some cloth, you know, you know, something, some cheese cloth, something like that, which can breathe, and cover it like this. Try not to have it directly on the sun. 15 to 25 degrees, that's perfect. As I said, the scooby by itself, actually it will stop at some certain point. It will not grow like this. It will stop around here. And after that, the scooby will more or less kind of, you know, in equilibrium. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. If you do, you can cut it in kind of, then, you know, the most simple is one, just take it, take it apart, you know, put it in the fridge. I don't like it. I prefer to cut it in half, so you have all the layers in the new or old scoby. So we did kombucha, what's going to happen? Uh, it will, uh, be the next, let's say, week or so, make the layer. So you will see again the fresh kombucha on the top. This is the jar, the size of the jar where I grew it before. Ah. For this one is for a month and something. But at home, when you bring your home uh, culture at home, like this, and then uh, when you fill it up uh, the cloth on the top, you don't close it, just you know, really with uh, this. And I would fill it up up to here, maybe with the kombucha. So it starts to grow in this position. And there's still some kind of air kind of equilibrium here. Uh, this one would be fine for, if you let it like this for a week or two, uh, especially for two weeks, it will be not really drinkable, it will be too acidic, but the kombucha will be nice and strong and thick. So it will be easy to take and put it in a new batch. So that's so what I, I recommend it for the first kind of time, for the first workshop, you know, kind of for the first two weeks to do it like that. And after that, start to brew basically once per week, you know, and have a series for the drink, starting in a bigger batch, you know. But it's up to you really. This is fine, uh, bigger, better, later on for the fermentation. When you make it, you can make small jars and three of them in the same time. Tomorrow there is a workshop basically and dinner on the Korean style of food. I will try to have these ready in the bottles, but we will see. And we will start to put a small piece of the culture so you can take it home. Scoby, what does it mean? Uh, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Yeah, Scoby is actually in the with somebody came from. So, yeah. In uh, shops you can buy kombucha things. Yes. They are at stored at room temperature and they last for, for a while. Mm -hmm. What did they do to them? Sulfites? Uh, no, pasteurized. they are actually, well, most of them, they don't pasteurize, some, some of them are pasteurized. So they are dead. Some of them are not pasteurized, but I'm a bit afraid, actually quite afraid, how the industrial production of kombucha looks like. Uh, the commercial kombucha, some of them are quite decent, some of them are not very nice. Uh, I know in Czech they sell kombucha like that in the bottles, room temperature, and they get kind of overconnected and kind of, you know. In America, there was a few years ago big problem. All the kombucha had to go out of the shop because they did a uh, checkout. They were sorry at room temperature and they were over 2% alcohol, <coughs> which is already quite pretty decent. And it was a kind of great for the local production because this is quite business, business or the, in the States is coming to Europe too. So what happened that all the big corporations had to take the things out, it took them more than half a year to come back. I have some questions about what's uh, not good health-wise for the culture. Health-wise? And I'm thinking about herbs and spices you might ah. add to your mixture. I wouldn't need that. anything, because the ginger, I put the honey. Yeah. If you strain kefir, yeah. uh, which is milk product, you can get your cheese, like similar to flour, you know, yeah. or kind of very yogurt. And this liquid. This is kept in weight, full of microbes, amino acids, etc. Uh, one person of this in the brew, active culture. Uh, again, 6% of sugar. So for 10 liters, 600 grams of sugar, 100 liters of this, water, and go. Beautiful. I, you can make anything from this. You can make hippie food, you can make a nettle flavor, you can make ginger beer, whatever you like, because you flavor generally 
at the end of the fermentation. I recommend you, if you want to make kombucha with flavors, mate flavor, fine. Do add ingredients at the end, just before you bottle, and which have minimal amount of sugars. Uh, I think mate, for example, would be nice. Netto, mint, you know, dried stuff. You do what we did today. This, I will, for example, now decide, okay, let's make some mate flavor. I will get, for this, this is around 20 liters, so if I will be really hard, I will get one person, so 200 grams of uh, mate. I will make this, you know, I'm not going to say, I will down to the base, so I will add, you know, maybe one, two liters of hot water, let it, you know, sit for maybe half an hour, strain it, and I will be adding some sugar before I add it, so a bit, you know, problematic because of the sugar, and hopefully then you have a nice mate flavor. But for example, with the ginger, uh, I like to add, at the moment, I shred the ginger fresh and I add it to the brew two or three days before I harvest. And at the moment, I like, for example, to take organic tangerines, uh, for example, I cut them and blend them in the blender, I put them in, in the ginger, or let's say one day before I harvest, I put the tangerines. So two, eight. two days before I <coughs> harvest, I put the shredded ginger. One day before I harvest, I put a shred of tangerines, and on the day of the harvest, I make with extra ginger boiled because ginger which is boiled, there is a change of ginger rolls yeah. to ginger rolls, etc. You know, there's a difference in the uh, pungicity and the flavor, and I like that actually. But I like also the good health properties of the fresh ginger. So I add a little bit of the boiled ginger, I strain everything, taking all the peels, you know, and everything out. And check your for the sweetness and have a bottle it. So, your hands? Yes, yes practically. No, you will get your practical spoons. Uh, take a piece, like this maybe, and put it in a jar, one by one. You can but this is too big. No, yeah, the, the, you can smaller, but not too small. You know, like don't worry about it. Of course, it's too small. Yeah, that's okay. You, know, you can bigger, but smaller. You put it over the substrate. There's the tea and the tea and the sugar. That's the growing medium, and it creates by itself. The difference compared to kefir, kombucha, uh, scoby, it started even just from the liquid. Uh, kefir grain, if you don't have fresh kefir grain, it will be not recreated. It doesn't work like that. So you have to get someone to give you the kefir grain. It's in there. I can show you. This is just like it. If you could, when they put it in, if you can put a little bit of this here, like this, and after that, we will add up to here fresh Okay? In Central America, I put it like, like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. But you can get bigger than What about this? This is the fresh medium. So basically, uh, you can leave it in the jar for a few days. I would recommend at home, when you come, uh, make one liter of brew. Jar like this is, I think, around 1.5 liters, something like that. Yeah. Jar like this for the start will be fine. Just leave it a bit of so air. With that cup, you can start. Yeah, so with this one, absolutely, you know, I would fill it like this. So it has the old liquid, new liquid, and the scoby. And at home, make the black tea again and the sugar, and fill it up here, and just flip it over in it. Put the cloth on top yes. and let it sit for one to two minutes. You can use it. Uh, it doesn't grow so well. Green tea is your best solution to the black tea. You know, it's a, so, you know, it's a substitute. But it's kind of, you know, um, it's okay, it will grow, but it's not as good as the black tea. You will see it on the screen. On the speed of so you leave the milk standing and it builds this kind of uh, layer. It no, it's not layer. This is are the grains. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no. It's kind of it uh, coagulates and there are kind of pockets of liquid in it, etc. You know, it looks really interesting, kind of greenish color, whatever. But uh, these are the things. This are, this is the kefir again. You can touch it if you like. This is what is making the job happen. No, 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 no. You, you, I think. No, with Damn! Why not? You want no, I don't have enough, and yes, you don't need yeah. yes, it. Honey. Is this what you want it for? I no. wonder. No, no, no. Just uh, wanted to try it. Oh, yeah, like that.
So I'm giving the grains to the people who are not going to eat them. Ah. Oh. And then what are we going to do here? You don't eat them. <laughs> that's, that's the first one. Oh, but... <laughs> I, I, I have... I don't want to impose on you, but you know. I, yes. I have three, three buckets uh, of, of milk here. With the grains? With the grains. Okay. So can you show me, show the grain, how they look like? Because they, sometimes yes. they are different. You can ferment yeah. the milk, you will get a really nice kind of if you ferment. Yeah. But it's not so stable like, like this culture with the grains. I had this culture with me for two years in a, a hip flask kind of, you know. Yeah. Uh, filling with the milk without the grain was fine, <coughs> but the uh, flavor would be changing more. This is more stable. Uh, and I think there are more microbes. When you say grain, oh, beautiful. For example, with the ginger. I know you're mixing them. <laughs> Sorry? You're mixing them. Yeah, they are, they are really beautiful. Uh, can you move them all? Would you mind to move them all here? Yes. yes. When you say grains, and I'm mean grains as, as in as in corn, or yeah. it's basically polysaccharide. It's so it's colony, or, or it is a colony. structure. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a self-supporting. It's both. It's a structure yeah. built by the colony. Yeah, and like it's, it's alive. Uh, the structure is but alive. Like everything. It's, it's like house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. build it. They build it from the biomaterials, so kind of you know. Yeah. It's a yeah. kefir. It's called. It's a uh, kefir. Batch and then and yeah. for one to two, uh, two, two to three days I fermented the kefir, it is coagulated, yeah. and when it was coagulated and I like the taste, I make a big bowl, yeah. colander and uh, cheesecloth, yeah. put the batch in, uh, or they took out the grain, started a new batch, and then when I strain for several hours, you know, separating the liquid part and uh, yeah. and then you get that and you get yes. And I make spreads from that sweet spreads, uh, salty spreads, you know, everything basically. So if you can taste this now, this is with the uh, kind of marmalade, very nice on the pancakes. Which we may have tomorrow, we will see you during the day. No, because uh, this was kind of, you know, it's too much to cover, you know, cover in one bowl. This you have to keep, this is about. You can no, brew see. just from the liquid or just from this you can use for brewing too. The, it's all full of microbes. But if you want to keep your culture good and you you know you want to keep these grains and they will grow within one month and a half to two months I'm able to uh, make kind of you know regrow them, you know, hundred percent kind of you know uh, kind of weight increase. Uh, uh, once you have too many of them, you can start to put them in the fridge and after you give them to the people, kind of, you know. Because it will start to ferment too fast. You put them on holiday in the fridge. I do. Yeah. But I will see after three days, I will have some kefir. You will see some liquid. It will be a liquid, you eat this. After three days, you will get this. You can make it in the fridge or you can strain it through the cheese cloth. If you do it step by step, you can do it like this. Cheese cloth on the top. Yeah. It's fine. If it's deep bowl, it will not touch. Or you will take it out of the liquid. You just take it out, you take the liquid out and put it there again. And wait when it's drained completely. It's just a simple procedure. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so, kefir grains. Who wants the kefir grains at the moment? Yes, please, adopt some. Gosh. 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 It's fine, it'll be okay for three days. But two to three days max. There's not too much milk. And do it maybe in a half to the jar. When you put it in a jar, uh, there are bacteria in this car. Leave there some air. At least 20% of air. You go. It's an early car. Kefir. Now, tasting, whoever likes tasting, I will bring you some drinks. Up, let's go up. Cider. Kefir is originally from Caucasus. At least that's what we claim. Sorry? Caucasus. A few hundred years, no problem, track it down there. There's a strong culture there. 
Nee, nee, dikke, dikke gekookte uh, mossel met uh, oester, oesterzwam. Ja, nee, dan, dan de, de vegetarische uh, zo, zwam, oesterzwam. Wat is toe? Zo voelt dat. En dit? Lijm. We don't know too much about it yet. Oh, it's, you know, you real, it's here for a long time, but modern science, uh, you get cultures like this over more easily. Uh, it's called, for example, in America, uh, La Madre de la Vinagre. If you make vinegar and you don't have this culture in there, the culture it starts to ferment by itself, and it, later on, thing which looks like basically like kombucha mother on the top, kind of bio biofilm. Which is kind of, you know, you can use it to make a new vinegar machine. Uh, this is uh, what I get here, based, and mm -hmm. I added rooibos. Rooibos tea yeah. with herbal uh, aromas. Oh, it's, a herbal, yeah. it's very nice, it's fizzy, I like it, it's light, much lighter than Cambria, so you should try this. Uh, whoever had the cup. It's just like honey, I guess, commercial honey. Mm -hmm. it's, oh. it's just a sugar, no minerals, kind of, no amino acids, nothing. It's just uh, stinked. Uh, I would try now the water kefir without flavor. Where's my cup first? Now we have make Can you explain about water kefir? Yeah. Water kefir is basically an agriculture which is uh, similar like uh, kombucha. Uh, it's grown uh, from the sugar uh, and water. You don't add tea. It's not necessary. So like sugar uh, and the water and the kefir in it. And have a good flavor in base, whatever you like. Cherry wine, sweeter, I like it. Uh, made by uh, Martin in Hamburg. Uh, it's extremely simple. Oh yeah, for the people who want to try uh, Marcel Verot Kimchi. So tomorrow we have some also kimchi. Yeah. 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 What's, what's that? Chinese cabbage and root beet? Uh, root, red beet, uh, garlic. Oh yes, that is fish sauce. Not, uh, not vegetarian. Is, uh, cider. Uh, who want to use? Oh, sorry, taste the apple wine cider. Homemade again from the guys from the warm zone. Munster. I remember my dad. Pickles.